It always seems like the new person in the narcissist's life, their new supply, has this wonderful relationship that they've just entered into with this amazing person. But what you're actually seeing is a narcissist hard at work, love bombing, gaslighting, and brainwashing a new person, getting them to lower their standards, their values, and of course their expectations so that a narcissist can do as they please. A narcissist doesn't pick a new person and decide to change. In fact, they leave old relationships and friendships and find new ones because they don't have any intention of changing. And this is simply the easiest route. Well, I don't want to work on this relationship or friendship. I don't want to all of a sudden have self-reflection work on this and get better. No, I'll just go and find something new. They have no intention of changing. Simply find somebody new, start this process all over again. So in this video, I will discuss a little bit further and explain why the new supply in the narcissist's life will not be treated any differently than anyone else. But I also want to make a few points on why this new person, the new supply, isn't really even that great anyway. And I'm not insulting anybody. I'm saying as far as the narcissist is concerned, the new supply is shiny and new, but that doesn't necessarily equal awesome source of supply. I mentioned love bombing. And yes, this is typically what most narcissists do as they try to lure and coax in a new source of supply. They become the savior, the hero. They look great on paper. They tell sob stories of a terrible past, you know, stories filled with bad relationships and unavailable friends, terrible family that just couldn't cut the mustard. All sources that a narcissist chooses gets love bombed. And as we know, not all of us are created equal. So different folks will get different kinds of love bombing, different variants of love bombing, but it's up to the narcissist to sort out what kind of love bombing and how strong the love bombing is for each individual person. It's kind of like the the love language thing that we've all heard about. For some people, they need acts of service, you know, someone to help us do things. For other people, it's gifts or kind words, time, attention, and so on. And the narcissist figures out very quickly what you need. They also figure out how little they actually need to give you in order for you to do what they want. And this is typically how we're sucked in with love bombing. And this happens with the new supply as well. But this is why you'll see different tricks and tactics employed by the narcissist. Maybe they take a trip, but the two of you never did that. Maybe you got the trip, but the new supply gets a different form of love bombing. Whatever it is, whatever happens to you or to the new person when they're being love bombed, it's all essentially done to lower inhibitions and suck the new person in all the same. It's all the same. It doesn't really matter. When we see a narcissist on the clock, hardworking and love bombing away, it's easy for a lot of people, I feel, to look at that and go, wow, look what this person is getting that I didn't. Look how they're being treated. Wow, this is, you know, this is amazing what this new person is getting. And that's where I have to come in with the possibly a little too harsh, but I don't care. Well, duh, they're getting love bombed. You got love bombed. I did. We all did in some way, shape or form. And we were over the moon on cloud nine about it, of course. However, it's not called the narcissistic cycle of abuse for no reason. It is just that, a cycle. And after love bombing comes the next step and it will always happen, devaluing. Just like us, the newbie is only new for a certain amount of time. And that's normally about three to six months, sometimes less, sometimes a little bit more, but three to six months is a pretty good mark to kind of set it at. Just as the whole like honeymoon phase is wearing off and folks are settling into a more mature, adult, committed relationship. This is when the narcissist becomes bored. They've learned about this person, wooed them, chased them, been chased, slept with them, got what they wanted. And it's kind of like a five-year-old looking at a pile of toys for their birthday. Okay, yeah, this one's great, but you know, it's been a whole 30 seconds. Where's my next present? They're ready for something new. But what happens? What happens when the honeymoon is over and the love bombing fades? Why does it fade? Well, again, the narcissist gets bored really quickly. That's something to keep in mind. And on top of that, they constantly want something new. You know, they want the torrid love affairs and it's sneaky and dramatic, chaotic, exciting, and 
all of that. They love fighting, and we, we know how all that goes. Once we move from love bombing and get into devaluing, it's also because the new supply isn't anymore what the narcissist wanted. They thought it was at the time, but narcissists, as we know, become very quickly not only bored, but very disenchanted with people because no one is perfect and they were expecting this new source to be perfect. Maybe they appeared to be perfect at the beginning of the relationship because narcs go too far too fast and don't get to know a person very well. The new supply will fail with a narcissist. Nobody can meet the high expectations a narcissist has day in and day out consecutively for the rest of ever. It is an absolute impossibility. So now the new supply isn't meeting expectations. They probably have expectations of their own for the narcissist that, that the narcissist is purely uninterested in. The narc is bored and yeah, poof, here we are. It's all downhill from here for the new supply. Think about what happened with you. How did you go from golden to garbage? When did the fairy tale turn into an absolute nightmare? The way that it went with you is probably a very similar way that it will go with the new source of supply. If you'd like to talk privately about what you're going through with a narcissist, have someone to vent to, get some help and support from a fellow survivor who understands, you can send an email to book a chat with Jess at gmail.com to set up one-on-one -on -one chat sessions with me. So our value and the value of the new supply gets lower over time. And after a few months or so, we're just flat out not as desirable to the narcissist as we were before. No different with the new supply. This is when the narcissist and the new supply make that transition into devaluing. Once all that fluffy bunny garbage is over, the narcissist devalues. They have to. They're not getting that primo supply, that love bombing. So they need to get their kicks, their attention, their ego boost, and their supply a different way. Narcissists are also obsessed with power and control. If and when they feel like they're losing power and control from this person, the devaluing will actually worsen. A narcissist needs to make their new supply and every other source of supply feel confused, trapped, as though they can't do better, that they are in fact the problem. They're not doing enough. They're not good enough. Affairs are going to start to happen within the relationship, physical and or emotional. New supply is always being sought after in the devaluing stage. As soon as that devaluing begins to happen, their head is already on a swivel looking for somebody else. But until a proper replacement can be found, the narcissist still needs supply and attention from you. They're just getting it differently now because they are into the devaluing stage with the new supply. They pick fights with this person instead of going on dates. They gaslight instead of love bomb. But ultimately, devaluing fails. It won't be enough to keep the narcissist in a relationship. And a narcissist will discard once they feel that they have sufficient supply found that can take the place. And this can take a while in some cases, but they might also carry on long-term affairs without necessarily discarding the new source or current source, what have you. But there's literally no relationship left between the two people. The new supply is not some special savior who can like do something you can't. The only way a new supply will ever truly succeed in their relationship with a narcissist is if they manage to maybe stay longer or maybe get married if you didn't or have kids if you didn't or something like that. Um, if they stay longer than you in the relationship, put up with more than you did. But I really have to ask you, is that winning? Is that success? Let's say, for example, you were abused for two years. You were in a two-year relationship, but the new supply, they have been with this person for four years. So this person has gone through four years of abuse. Um, yippee, <laughs> I guess. I guess they win if that's how you really qualify winning and being in a relationship with a narcissist. But let's spill the real tea here. The new supply isn't even so great anyway, and I have a few reasons why. The new supply might just be a narcissistic conquest. And by that, I mean, sometimes a narcissist will chase and love bomb and give off this appearance that they want a relationship, a friendship, what have you with this person, when frankly, 
all they're after is an ego boost. You're a notch in the headboard, a drop in the bucket, no more and no less. So they chase somebody that they find really desirable, really attractive, whatever, just to see if they can bag the person. It's no more and no less. And sometimes they fall ass backwards into a relationship with this person, but they started out as nothing more than a conquest, an ego boost. There will be no emotional connection there, I promise you. Another thing to keep in mind is narcissists will never be happy. Narcissists are missing a lot of things and have a lot of issues internally. They're seeking happiness, love, validation, etc. externally from other people. All their little sources in that hierarchy that is their harem of supply. However, when we're missing something inside ourselves and we don't know how to love ourselves, we don't know how to validate ourselves and care for ourselves, this is never going to go anywhere. Listen, it's no one else's job to provide you happiness. You know that old saying that life's what you make it? Um, That's 100% true, but the narcissist won't take on that job. They make all of those responsibilities and issues your job or the new supply or whoever, and that is going to fail. You can't take somebody else's happiness, love, joy, soul, spirit, feed off of it, cram it into yourself and think that that's going to work. It doesn't. Narcissists are miserable, unhappy little creatures. And we can see this very clear and transparently, I might add, in how they behave. No one's secure about themselves, feeling good and positive and happy, needs to bully others into submission, frankly, and use fear and scare tactics to get their way. This is really, really gross bullying, among other things. And frankly, Survivor, it's completely pathetic. When a soul can find no happiness, why would the new supply be this end-all, be-all that like magically makes something happen and and fix it? Yeah, that's, that's not how any of this works. The narcissist is restless and will keep looking for something that they need to find inside themselves. Whether they have the capacity to find it or not, I don't really care. I'm not here to teach a narcissist how to get better. Another reason the new supply isn't hot shit is frankly because the narcissist has possibly just made a scramble pick. A scramble pick is what I call the person who the narc runs out real quick and holds on to for dear life when no good or desirable source can be found. However, the narcissist more than likely won't let on that, you know, this person is kind of like the last, last resort. So you might be sitting there and upset and jealous and heartbroken over a person who the narc isn't even thrilled with anyway. And again, there's no emotional connection here. It's, hey, I don't want to be alone. Hey, I want to shove the fact I'm in a new relationship in somebody else's face. I want them to feel bad. I'm just here because I need attention. There's no real connection with this new person. Unfortunately, the new supply just doesn't know that yet. If the narc does seem thrilled with this new person, I mean, (laughs) frankly, just give it six months and then wish you could be a fly on the wall because... You'll never truly know what's going on behind closed doors, except you will because you've been behind closed doors with them. So you probably know how this is going to go. And this is what happens to the new supply in the end. More than likely, at least 90% of what happened to you is going to happen to the new supply and the one after that, just like the one before you and the one after that and the one before the one before you. You know, this is a disorder. People with disorders pretty much do the same thing. And I always relate this to hoarding disorder. Well, hoarders, frankly, they hoard, but some hoard trash and garbage and some hoard antiques and treasures, but they all hoard. It's a disorder. They do the same general types of things, just slightly differently than others because no two people are the same. This is a cycle, the narcissistic cycle. And cycles kind of, you know, they... (laughs) They cycle. (laughs) This is what's always going to happen. Love bomb, devalue, discard, and subsequent Hoover over and over and over again. Thanks so much for listening. Please subscribe for more videos on narcissistic abuse awareness, education, and of course, support. Have a great day, survivor, and take care of yourself.